over 9,800 people getting set for Virginia Tech and Duke. The Hokies trying to get a signature on their resume and work their way into the NCAA tournament. Mike Krzyzewski, eight wins away from the all-time record. Seth Greenberg, OT's 40 minutes away until he gets his fourth victory over the number one team in the country. Just moments ago, Seth Greenberg had this to say to his team. Then you'll hear Dan and Dick. That are healthy, you guys have been through it all. You've had deep tours, you've had potholes, but you know the one thing you always done? Every single obstacle you've met head on. Every single obstacle you didn't turn to. Plumley rounding out the starting five for Virginia Tech. The two key players, the high scoring guard of Malcolm Delaney, and the double double machine up front in Jeff Allen. It is imperative, says head coach Seth Greenberg, that Allen stay out of foul trouble and stay on the court. They're very limited in terms of going to the bench, Dan. They've had some major injuries earlier this year. They lost Hudson, who was a terrific guard. They've played without Thompson, Cheney, Reigns. They have four key components that would be part of this club. And Duke has one who makes up for four in Irving. Jamie Lucky, Brian Kersey, Brian Dorsey, our officials, and we're underway with the Hokies getting the first possession. Man-to-man -man defense by Duke, playing outstanding defense. Last seven games of the winning streak, teams are shooting like 40% against them. Bell inside, Allen has it rejected, and it's Duke's ball. Duke is on a seven-game winning streak. They are 26-2 and two on the season. Both losses on the road, one at Florida State, one at St. John's, which, by the way, picked up another big win today, winning at Villanova. Tell you one thing, Robin doing a great job. When those two losses, they lost to two athletic teams. Yes. Teams that were a little bit superb athletically, quickness. And that's a little bit of a problem here tonight. Virginia Tech has that, plus has a lot of emotion going for them. Duke has more size, Virginia Tech more athleticism. First meeting of the season between these two programs. Seth Curry, whose dad, Dell, of course, was a superstar here for Virginia Tech back in the 80s, misses the shot and now gets called for the foul. There's Dad Dell. Let's think about Seth's, Seth for a moment here. He grew up a Virginia Tech fan. He wore Virginia Tech jerseys as a kid. He wears his dad's number. I mean, this has got to be an emotional night for Seth Curry. Well, yeah, he really wanted to play here. But obviously, they didn't think he was good enough. He went down to Liberty, and now you better believe that he's going to be emotionally charged. Since he's been in a starting lineup, they've played really better. And he had 22 that got him in the starting lineup against North Carolina when he came off the bench. He's become a, a fairly consistent third scoring option for Mike Krzyzewski. And he's getting better defensively. He's getting a little bit stronger physically. Delaney and Smith matched up on one another. What a great matchup at the guard position. Allen, the deep jumper, and the weak side rebound to Kyle Singler. You know, Singler was in a slump shooting. Broke out the last game with 28. But the one thing he was consistent, he played great team defense. And that's something the Duke coaching staff is really emphasizing when they talk to us how tough he has been defensively this year. Mason Plumlee, tough move to the baseline. Good defense by Victor Davila. I think it's important, important, really, for Virginia Tech to get an early lead. I really believe that psychologically. A trap on Delaney in the corner. He finds nice out. He finds Davila, and they're on the board. Davila gets the play on the inside. Great diagonal pass, bounce pass. This crowd is charged up, man. They're yes, all they charged are. up. These Hokies want this W badly. Nolan Smith misses the three. Remember, each of the last three years, Virginia Tech has played in the NIT. So these great seniors, Delaney, Allen, they have never played in the NCAA tournament. Davila again. Davila giving post presence inside. You got to worry a little bit about being too emotionally charged to start the game, and then you end up with what they call emotional fatigue. <laughs> so far, so good. No fatigue in this building right now. Plumley. Off to Smith, who's leading the ACC in scoring and in assists. Boy, these Hokie players are fired up. Really talking out there, working on D. Ryan Kelly misses the three. Delaney soaring for the rebound. He's multi-talented. He's a real talent. In the corner, Eric Green had a clean look, but he misses the three. He's one of the most improved point guards in the league. Really doing a terrific job. Good free throw shooter as well. Became a starter, Dick, after the injury to Dorenzo Hudson. That moved Delaney off the ball. 
Green, the sophomore, stepping in. He's done a nice job. Yeah, he really distributes the ball well. Nolan Smith will quiet the crowd, averaging better than 21 points per game. Tell you one thing, there's no doubt he's in the argument for player of the year, even though I give this slight edge to Jimmer. He was again sensational, getting 25 to beat San Diego State today. And nine assists. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but I agree with you. I think those are the top two in the country right now. I know we're going to show uh, the five guys you've got on your first team All-American team a little bit later on tonight. They're both a big part of it. Allen. Jeff Allen with just his fourth three-pointer of the season. He's been a double-double guy, though, throughout his career. He really gets on the glass, as Mike Krzyzewski said. A butterfly big time offensive rebound. What a drive by Nolan Smith. How many guards in America are as dangerous from outside and putting the ball on the floor as Smith? That's a great point, Dan. A lot of guys either have one of those areas but don't do both, and he can do both. He's gotten better and better over his four years in Durham. Allen defended by Kelly. Here comes the help from Plumley. Got to double up. You got to reverse the ball. Get it away from the double team. Nice pass. Yeah, one thing Virginia Tech started off slowly this year. They were four and four. They get better and better. Go to the bench early. Andre Dawkins is in the bench for Duke along with Miles Plumley. Tell you what, he's probably so charged up waiting for this moment. Playing here, wanted to play here, as you said, Dan, at Virginia Tech. Now it's going to get a moment now for Andre Dawkins to really shine. He's really been up and down as a player. He's been one dimension shooting the basketball. He's got to show a little bit more variety. Eric Green misses the free throw. Virginia Tech up five in the early going against the number one team of the nation, the Duke Blue Devils. Number four, number five, both lost today. San Diego State losing to BYU in Texas. Lost to Colorado. The Buffaloes went on a 37 to 9 run in the second half to beat the Longhorns. Pat Boyle doing a good job of the house. First can flat out play. Oh boy, he had 33 today. I think it's clearly now he's going to be the number one seeds. I think you're looking at one right here. I think you're looking at Pittsburgh. You're looking at Kansas and Ohio State. I think they're your four number one seeds unless something happens. One of those clubs collapses. Nolan Smith and Malcolm Delaney really getting after it. These two outstanding guards matched up on one another. That's a lot of pride right there. Both do good job defensively. Good help there. The block by Miles Plumley. Shot clock does not reset. And it will be a shot clock violation on the Hokies. Tell you one thing, Duke doing a better job blocking shots. Seth Greenberg won a little foul call there. He sees the same barber that you and I do. <laughs> we, we could get a deal, the three of us. Hey, we did yeah. a picture with his beautiful daughter. Yeah. The three of us, you had a great line. The three boys. <laughs> Beauty and the three beasts is what it was like. Well, Coach Greenberg's daughter, a member of the dance team here at Virginia Tech. Andre Dawkins, a deep one. And tapped back out by Kelly. Well, Mike Krzyzewski has nothing but praise for Kelly and the way he plays the game, the high basketball IQ that he's got. Well, he kept that ball alive, very reminiscent of last year. Zubik used to do that. Tip of the ball back, giving him second opportunities. Smith, tough one over Green. Another long rebound. Can't give them second and third opportunities. Tell you one thing, Singler has a winner's mentality. I don't care what the kid scores. I want him on the floor for me. There's a foul on Green. Do you know that this is Kyle Singler's 141st game, 140th start in the Duke program? That's not too bad. I think he's earned a scholarship. Yeah, he's done all right. He he 28 the last game, 30s his career high, November 27th, back in his home state of Oregon against his brother. He is fifth on Duke's all-time scoring list, and he's got Mike Jeminski in his sights for that fourth spot in the next couple of weeks. And there's a foul charge to Bell, who's giving up about three inches of height in that matchup against Singler. You know, Dan, you bring up the point totals. Reddick's number one at 2,769. Then Johnny Dawkins, a teammate of our own, Jay Billis, 2556. Leighton with 2460. Jaminski, 2323. And then Mr. Singler. So Singler could catch Leighton if Duke has a very deep run into the NCAA tournament as Mason Plumley comes in. For Kelly. Mason Plumley's been a big time rebounder in the second half of the season. Also blocked shots, seventh in the conference. In fact, 
Their defense has really been helped by Kelly taking charges and block shots, both by certainly Kelly as well. He's got 44 block shots this year, and Mason has 45. Nice cut. Davila and Miles Plumley called for the foul. Good execution, uh, good basketball efficiency right now to Virginia Tech. Getting good ball movement. We're going to watch this right there. There's the backdoor cut. Good recovery defensively to put him at the foul line. Take the dunk away. Wow. Pretty good looking play there by yep. Miles Plumley, but he gets called for the foul. Davila will go to the line for two free throws. Mike Krzyzewski with 894 wins in his career. You and I sat in a room with almost 1,800 wins earlier tonight with Mike Krzyzewski and Bob Knight. Well, we took a picture, the four of us. And between us all, we had like about 1,879 wins. I got 79. How many you got? Yeah, I'm, I'm not helping at all. <laughs> 1,800 wins. That's scary, yeah. man. That's scary. Well, I'm thinking, what are the odds? We were talking about this with Coach K at uh, shoot around earlier today. Jay Billis was there. What are the odds that the all time record in wins is going to be broken? By the protege, that the mentor will have the record and the protege will break it. That's so unique. And I remember putting up my age on me, watching him play in the garden when he coached West Point and Mike was the point guard. Couple of missed free throws by Davila. Virginia Tech could have a larger lead than it does right now. See, you want to pull the upset, you better convert on the free throw line. You can't allow those opportunities to slip by. They're playing with a lot of intensity on the defensive end. Matching up with you. Singler driving. Fade away. Good defense by Bell, but Singler knocks it down. I'll tell you one thing. Bell is a terrific defensive player. He's long. Doesn't have the size of Singler. Malcolm Delaney's still scoreless in this game. There he is with the ball. He's the leading scorer on this Virginia Tech team. Better than 19 a game. Eric Green misses the three. And the rebound to Mason Plumlee. And that's a great point. Delaney hasn't scored. The reason, the suffocating defense by Nolan Smith. People don't realize he's more than an offensive player. And Delaney called for the foul trying to guard Smith. This guy has been such an outstanding performer. He is fourth on Virginia Tech's all-time scoring list. He is second on their all-time assist list. So he is one of the all-time greats in this program, and he has never played in the NCAA tournament. You know, Dan, my preseason All-American team, my two guards were Delaney and Pullen. Pullen's really coming on strong now, performed exceptionally well today in a win over Missouri. And really, Delaney's been pretty good all year, just hasn't had enough help around him. Davila, a very active start to this game. Green, Bell, Pat. Nice look by Green. Team oriented. Just gave a nice look to his teammate. Green's game has gotten up and up and up. These Hokie fans are all fired up. Can it happen? Can number one go down? Singler, nice shot fake. Misses the 15 footer. Bodies on the deck, and Singler cleans up the mess. I can't believe it was no call there. Miles over the back. Oh, over the yeah, back. Yeah, Clearly so over the back. Yeah. Clearly over the back. They got away with one there. Smith hounding Delaney, who continues to run through screen after screen, trying to deny him the ball as well. Allen, a little out of control. And is fouled on the deck by Mason Plumley. Getting physical here at Castle Coliseum. Still hasn't scored in this game. What a rebound by Allen. Rejected, gets it back, misses again. What a battle on the glass. Finally, Smith has it for the Blue Devils. You know, Malcolm Delaney has not an open look yet. That was not an open look right there. I got five field goals and four tremendous assists. My guy Marty Arnoff lets me know. Ryan Kelly and Duke now 0 for 5 from three-point range. And remember the Florida State game, they had a tough time shooting threes. And it led to that. Allen blocked again. Kelly's a legit 6'10. Allen's closer to 6'7, 6'8. You know, not great athletes when you look at the Duke kids, but they have a great understanding of how to play. That's a perfect example. Perfect example. Did you see the shot fake? Catch the ball, triple threat position for you young kids, and the shot fake. 
A simplicity of a shot fake got him open for a layup. Mike Krzyzewski also says last year Kelly was 208 pounds. This year he's 232. It's made a huge difference. Good save by Tyler Thornton, but only for a moment. You know, Thornton's really been a great help for them defensively. ESPN, the home court of college hoops, continues tomorrow with Judgment Week, presented by the movie Battle Los Angeles on ESPN at 1 Eastern. Good one, number eight Purdue in East Lansing to take on Michigan State. The Spartans are still looking to solidify, uh, perhaps improve, their position heading into March. Tell you what, two teams you don't want to see on your line. Come tournament time in that first round, Michigan State or Kansas State. Preseason number two and number three in the country, right? Yep. Shot clock at four. Delaney, nice look. Allen, long on the three. Should have been reversed. Should have been Allen yeah. to Delaney. Ten minutes in, Delaney has a score. I'm in his own right now. In his own. Very difficult to zone, Joe. I think it's very difficult to zone now. They run good zone offense. You got guys who can kick it out and can shoot the three. Singler misses the three on that occasion. Virginia Tech will zone to stay out of foul trouble because their numbers are low as Eric Green puts the pedal to the metal at the other end. I like Green. I'll tell you one thing. Changes speeds really well with his dribble. Goes in transition. Look at this right here. Change speeds. Gets to the open area. There he just floats it up on the glass and it falls down. Look right here. Great shoulder fake. Got some big games against Maryland, 24 and 20 points, so he's a scoring threat. And he also is a sophomore who wasn't even a starter at the beginning of the year. He leads the ACC in assist to turnover ratio. He's really taking advantage of a chance that came his way because of the injury to Hudson. If you look at the ACC right now, big game for Virginia Tech. Maryland's got a big game tomorrow yes. at North Carolina. I mean, that's a big game for Gary Williams in the terms. Earlier today, the teams that had to win did win. Boston College won at Virginia. Clemson beat Wake Forest. And Florida State beat Miami. As Thornton, you talked about, he has been a major contributor for Duke since the injury to Kyrie Irving. That was a plus. They left him wide open because he's not noted as a scorer, and he nails the three. That's a big positive for Duke. This is 4-3 of the season in 14 attempts of the first made three-pointer tonight for the Blue Devils. His great asset is his defensive intensity. He's able to play the point guards. Allow Nolan. Good hands by Miles Plumley. Thornton ahead to Smith for the jam, and Duke's got the lead. Nice play right there by Thornton to get the ball to Smith. Smith recognizes it, comes back, gives him a little high five, a low five. <laughs> But he gave the ball. First lead of the night for the Blue Devils, and you wonder, does Delaney start to press? He still hasn't scored. Smith's all over him. Does he start pressing, trying to get open looks, or does he let the game come to him? Allen, jump off. That is beautiful. He's big time. Yes, he I is. Tell Dan, he's a big time performer. He's a PTP, a prime time performer. Five points, five rebounds already tonight. His last eight games, averaging better than 18 and 12. They cannot beat Duke unless Delaney gets going. Delaney has to be productive for them to win. Singler can't get the shot off. And then we'll draw the foul. He's as good as anybody in college basketball doing that. Yeah, he does a great job, first of all, when he catches the ball. He is always squared to the basket, and he's always a triple threat position. Something that's so vital. So many kids are so out of control. Singler to the line. Second foul on Eric Green. Seth Greenberg has such a limited bench. And he has still not gone to that bench tonight. The five starters have played the first 12 minutes of this game. All those injuries we talked about, the kids that he thought would contribute this year. You had JT Thompson out with his torn ACL. You had Lorenzo Hudson went out, hurt his foot, played the first nine games. Alan Cheney was supposed to help him from out of Florida. Florida. Yeah. There's a viral out. condition that affects his heart, hasn't played at all. Kid named Reigns was supposed to play as well, but he was out with a foot injury. And there's Kyrie Irving still out with that toe injury. Has not played since early December. And Mike Krzyzewski has always said they don't expect to get him back. And both coaches do what all good coaches do. They focus on what they do have, not on what they don't. Corner three for Green from Delaney. Tell you one thing, Green has really elevated this game. Nice look by Delaney. Delaney. Green is all pumped up. They're sitting in that two, three zone, as you said, to protect players because they just don't have enough bodies. 
Only eight scholarship players. They got good eight, though. I'll tell you one thing, those kids are good players. Kelly from the elbow. Virginia Tech was picked second of the conference preseason behind Duke, but the injuries have made it a tougher year for them. Delaney continues to move the basketball. Davila got it back. Davila working hard. That one thing you said it earlier, Davila has come to play. He's been a force on the inside. See, when he do it in the last three games, would make him 10 and 6 in the conference. I'm not convinced that's good enough. It wasn't good enough last year. I thought they got a raw deal and should have been in the tournament, but the committee said no top 50 wins. At the moment, our bracketologist Joe Lenardi has them in Virginia Tech as a 10. And right now, it would appear, according to Joe Lenardi, he's got a Virginia Tech in, but as a 10 seed, and they've got some tough games still to come against some other so-called bubble teams, Clemson to BC. This is a monster week or so right now for the Hokies. Oh, monster week. You think back two years ago, they're 10 and 6, and Tom O'Connor, the chair of the committee, said they didn't get in because they didn't have top 50 wins. Nolan Smith, mm -hmm. he's doing all he can to keep Duke here in the hunt. Eight points for Smith, the leading scorer in the ACC at better than 21 a game. Seth Curry is back in now for Duke. Tell you one thing, Davila and also Green have been superb. They got 14 and 21 points. And Delaney still scoreless. Better than 13 minutes into the game, yet a Virginia Tech is clinging to a one-point lead, and Seth Greenberg still has not gone to his bench at all tonight. Another good strong inside move, but a block from behind. Allen knocks down the jumper. Hey, Jeff Allen feeling it as well. They can't get an open look for Delaney. The reason? Very simple. The suffocating defense by Nolan Smith. Yep. He is playing terrific on a defensive end. And forgive me, Jarrell Eddy was in for just uh, a few seconds. Is not into the game now. Other than that, nobody's played off the bench. Oh, what a great pass. What a great pass. Are you serious? The Hokies are jumping with joy. Oh, they're rocking and rolling here in Blacksburg. And it's not for football, baby. It's hoops. Terrell Bell to Eric Green for the play of the game. That's going to be on Sports Center. You, get, you betcha. Jump hook, Plumley. That will not be on Sports Center, but you know what? That'll be on Mike Krzyzewski's mind. Yeah. That's two on the board. That's right. It's worth, it's worth just as much. And the deficit is now three for Duke. Mason Plumley continuing to grow as a player. Yeah, Mike said he really is getting better and better. Jeff Allen, what a night. Somebody call the fire chief, man. He's burning up the nets. He's burning up the nets. Jeff Allen's on fire. If they can only get their guy Delaney going, this could be an incredible night for the Hokies. Jeff Allen might have himself a double-double by halftime. Hand off to Smith. Baseline drive. Off Davila. And it will stay with Duke. Seth Greenberg, this time of year, every year it seems they're on the bubble. It's a lot of emotional <laughs> anguish for a coach waiting for Selection Sunday. Have they done enough? In the NIT, each of the last three years, two of those three years, it was felt they were legitimately on the bubble and had a had at least a case to maybe get in. Here's Delaney. That's as far as Deuce. What a way to get it. Leaked out in transition. That's usually another situation. Not getting back defensively. Duke did a poor job. He knew right away where the open guy was. See, Curry right there didn't want to foul him. He didn't want to get that third foul. The lead is seven. Singler can't turn the corner. I tell you one thing, they're defending really well, Virginia Tech. Tyrone Garland into the game, number 21 for the Hokies, freshman guard out of Philadelphia. The one thing about Duke, though, they get everybody's best hit every game, so they're accustomed to this. Well, I'll tell you, Davila, who's really a complimentary player on this team, not like Delaney or Allen, is having a monster first half and working his tail off at both ends. Well, he's got more points already than he had against Wake Forest in the last game. He had five. Under four minutes to go in the first half. The Hokies with the ball and a seven-point lead. I'll tell you one thing that's impressed me, the way they're executing. Showed a lot of patience. They're unselfish with the ball. Curry now defending Delaney. See, a lot of times you get a great score like Delaney, they'll take bad shots. Like that? Like right there. That was not available because they start to press. They start to press. They take bad shots. He was not forcing early. He's waiting for some of these things to happen. And Smith driving on the freshman to Garland and draws the foul to take us to the under four media timeout. Virginia Tech up seven 
on number tough game against Miami tomorrow night. I'll tell you one thing, there'll be some stars on the floor there. And I think the Knicks had to make that move. I know they gave a lot up, but you're going to give a lot up to get a mega superstar. And I think you're going to see the building blocks for next year when they add another guy to join those two, Stoudemire and Anthony. Very eventful trade deadline week, including Darren Williams going to New Jersey and Gerald Wallace going to Portland. I'm going to sign Williams, New Jersey. Smith rattles it home. It's a five point game. Now he does a great job getting free. Made by all Rolls Royce top five players in America. And would you believe it? Some of the anti Duke faction was screaming and yelling and tweeting me all kinds. How could you pick him? You're Dukey Vital. Are you serious? They're five better than that kid? I don't think so. A lock for first team All America. A lock. Garland. A little strong on the three. Seth Greenberg loves the toughness of Garland. He's a Philly kid, as we mentioned. They got a Baltimore guy at a Malcolm Delaney. They got some tough customers on this team. You got those kids from the large cities. Philadelphia kids really hurt going over when Syracuse went there. Mason Plumley yelling for the ball in the post, not getting it. Now he finally does. Trying to isolate him down that low box. Jump hook again. You can see why he wants the ball. Yeah. You can see why he wants the ball. He's becoming a complete post player now. And he's 6'11. Allen defending him only 6'7. And Seth Greenberg wants to stem the. One other guy I could have made a case. I was battling. Should have been Jawan Johnson or Derek Williams. And there's Smith. You can see one of only three players in the country averaging 20 and 5. On the cusp of becoming the only player in ACC history to lead the conference in scoring and assists. And after the injury to Kyrie Irving, he had to take on. A much larger role, both as a scorer and as a distributor for this team. And I'm going to still stay with my pick right now. Jimmy Fredette is the player of the year. I really believe that he has done for BYU is amazing. 25 and 9 assists today in a big win over San Diego State. Allen, nice look. Davila inside, and it rolls off the rim, but counted. A goaltending call, so credit the basket to Davila. Davila really operating inside. Seth Green a little on clapping in the hands. Davila really coming up big tonight. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, you can't touch the ball up there. Only two, two players have led the league in assists in the season since 73. Bobby Hurley and Greg Paulus. And Nolan right now leads the ACC both in scoring and assists. Curry dumps it off to Kelly. And Kelly not finding the range tonight. He's a good three-point shooter, but not tonight. They're struggling from that three. They struggled against St. John's for three. Delaney. And they struggled with Florida State when they lost that game right. for three. Duke is one for nine from three-point range. And Malcolm Delaney still has just two points tonight for Virginia Tech. Smith the drive. Nicely done. You know what? He protects the basketball mm -hmm. so well as he goes to the goal. He may not have blinding speed, but he's got a terrific first step, and he knows how to seal off the defense with his body. We near the final minute of the first half. Virginia Tech has led almost throughout. Bob Knight for years used to go to clinics. The list we're talking about. Catch the ball, triple threat position, use the shot fake. Offensive foul, Jeff Allen. Just his first. So Seth Greenberg's got to be relieved that his team has avoided foul trouble with such a limited bench. Eric Green has two fouls, and that's why Green's coming out right now with less than a minute to go as Manny Atkins, a sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, takes his place. I'll tell you one thing. Psychologically, your Virginia Tech played as well as they have leading most of the half you don't want to go in down at halftime psychologically I think the shot clock did not start as they inbounded the ball so they're going to do it over again you know it's amazing Duke has not turned the ball over yet Duke has not turned the ball over